We got heist, we got horror, we got hearts, and we got Mr. Rogers. This is episode 16 of Black Tomatoes. Stay tuned. Nancy Sinatra, I know that you do. Hey. <laughs> hello, 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 oh. hello. This is Carla Renala, and this is episode 16 of Black Tomatoes. And my co host joining me today is Scott Menzel. Hey. Lovely to be here as always. Hey, Scott. How are so, you? I'm great. Good. How, good. How you doing? Great. Great. So we started out with a little boots walk all over you we started out with a little boots are made for walking which was one of the songs featured in my favorite movie this week oceans eight <laughs> your favorite movie my this favorite weekend favorite movie this week oceans eight because it had all females in it okay um so we can start talking about it <laughs> uh so this go ahead I, Go ahead, I will, because I'll be the more positive for You sure two. will. But before we do that, let's play a little bit of this clip sure. real quick. I love this song. In three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball. And we are going to rob it. Not the ball itself. Oh. On the neck of Daphne Kluger. Valued at over a hundred million dollars. $150 million, actually. <laughs> okay, so that's the, what the premise of the film is. These chicks get together, led by Debbie Ocean, who's played by Sandra Bullock, and they plan a heist on the Met Ball during the gala. <laughs> now, I was all into it, only because I really have always been interested to know what the planning and details are that go into such a huge um, worldwide known event. So I was fascinated to see, you know, the little glimpses of that that they showed us in the film. I was also fascinated about the Toussaint necklace. I was like, is that necklace real or not? <laughs> and it actually is a real necklace. I was like, ooh, nice. A necklace from 1931, I think. So there's that. And I love the fact that they the film featured my favorites from film, TV, and the recording industry. So we had Sandra Bullock, we had Kate Blanchett, we had Mindy Kaling, we had Rihanna, we had Helena Bonham Carter, we had Sarah Paulson, I missed one. Who was Aquafina. It? Aquafina. So I loved all of them and I felt like all of them brought something different to the film. There wasn't a weak link amongst the women. Some women had more screen time than others. Some characters were more developed than others. And I really enjoyed it. It was a fun, entertaining film for me. The only thing that kind of sort of got on my nerves, <laughs> <laughs> like real quick, was the fact that when they, um, when the, the film finally introduced Rihanna, they reintroduced her with these locks and this Rasta character. I'm like, she couldn't be something else. She had to be a Rasta. And I don't know if that decision was made because she is from the islands and she naturally can do that accent. And they wanted that to be a little bit different. But when she pulled out that big Cheech and Chong joint, I was like, okay, really? Is this what we're going to do? This is what we're doing. And then they redeemed themselves fairly quickly from that. So I kind of got over myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I had that same impression. I mean, I, I, I thought that was so stereotypical and, and, and very racist in a lot of ways. It annoyed me. But yeah. they, they redeemed them. Like, it didn't last for very long. They redeemed it very, very quickly. So yeah. I'll give them a pass on that one. Um, for me, I, you know, I, I had mild expectations going into this movie. I was looking forward to it. Um, but I, I, I feel this way, and I'm going to be very honest when I say this. Um, just like the Ghostbusters remake with all women, um, I really would love to see some original movies that aren't based off already franchise. established yeah. franchises. And uh, for me, the, the, the star of this movie is Anne Hathaway. Anne right, Hathaway. I, that, I forgot too. Yeah. Aquafina and Anne Hathaway. Yeah. How could I forget Anne, Anne Hathaway? Anne Hathaway was what sold this movie for me. Um, and she was pretty much the star. I mean, this is like Anne Hathaway center stage and everyone else is secondary characters. Yeah, what I loved about Anne Hathaway in this movie is that she's kind of making fun of herself. She is, exactly. And it's pure comedy. <laughs> yes. Pure comedy. And Helena Bonham Carter, I did a show earlier this week where 
one of the panelists discussed the fact that Helena Bottom Carter does quirky better than anyone else. She does. And she just, she plays those really off kilter type of people really well. But it would be nice to see her play something else because I know she can. So, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's where my, my problem pretty much lie with the movie. I just felt like it was very generic. Mm -hmm. um, there was just the story set up. I, I feel like everything about it like was very girly and i'm glad that it was girly but like it was weird like everything it was like tied to fashion and the met gala well, and what's the met gonna the gala is fashion i know Scott. but like but why did it have to have that setting like it's like it's like it's so female like driven that i feel like they they didn't even take any risk by making the setting different i liked I, it I know, I know. I'm not, and you are in the majority on this one. I, it's, it's oh, completely. I am? You are, <laughs> yeah. you are definitely on the in the major, majority on this. I one. love that. And I'm what in I, the minority. And, and what I really love about it is that this is the thing. So whenever, and all, and it's only been twice as of late. But yeah. whenever an all female reboot of any film comes out, there's always this backlash to it, um, mostly from male critics. So the first film not the first film but the ghostbusters film grossed 46 million or so yes this one grossed like 41.5 million and they're kind of in the same neighborhood and it almost makes me wonder if the fact that a lot of the critics dog it out because it's all women like from you i'm not hearing that you didn't dislike it because it was all women you didn't care for it very much because you wanted a, an original theme or an original storyline to be yes. told am i right yes so I can respect that. But when somebody bashes the film just for the sake of bashing because it's all women, that's annoying. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, and we've talked about this. Uh, I was also on our show earlier this week. And, you know, what I would want to say about this movie is that there's just no risk involved with it. Mm -hmm. It's it's already an established franchise. So, therefore, it's a safe bet. You know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And then, unfortunately, like the Ghostbuster movie, you know, they were like, well... Now it doesn't work out because it's women who lost 50 or 60 million. Luckily, the budget on this one was a little bit lower. So I think it's still going to make out and it's still going to wind up making its budget back. So I don't think there's any real worry here. Mm -hmm. um, I just wish my problem with this movie is this. I love who puts Kate Blanchett in a movie and doesn't give her stuff. To it might have been editing. Yeah. You know, whenever it's always my thought process that whenever I see something like that, it's an editing issue. It's something that happened, like some scenes that she may have been in that did feature her yeah, prominently yeah. that may have been left on the cutting room floor. Right. So we won't know, unfortunately, until the DVD comes out with the extras. I know. <laughs> but, I just, it's know. just strange because it, it, the movie is pretty much marketed as Anne Hathaway being like the secondary character right mm -hmm. like it's like th th she's all part of the setup but really she took center stage through a lot of this movie and i just felt like everyone else was just just a shadow I, I, and I, it was it was very strange and th this is a beautiful cast it's a talented cast most and, definitely and i would have loved to see a little bit more interaction between them a little bit more having fun um it, it's fine there's nothing like i there I walk away with it. I probably give it like a six. It's fine, okay. but that's how it. many tomatoes? Though? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. My tomatoes, um, two and a half. Oh really? Two and a half. I give it four and a half tomatoes. Oh, four I and a half. loved me some Ocean's Eight. <laughs> okay. All right. So on to another film that sure. I know you're gonna have a lot to say. So there's this film that came out this week called Hotel Artemis. Yes. It stars Jodie Foster, Sterling K. Brown, Charlie Day, and Sophia Bortella. Or is that something like that? I know her name is Sophia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like <laughs> she's that. She's a badass, too. But she's in it, too. And um, it basically takes place in Los Angeles in the year 2028. There's this big riot that's going on, and everybody's locked up in this hotel. And Hotel Artemis is basically a hotel that takes in the wounded and the wanted. And you have to have a membership in this whole, there's this whole thing. But let's play the clip real quick. Hello. How can I help? Easy, fellas. Everybody's gonna get fixed up. Now verify your memberships, and we're off to the races. The Artemis is a secret hospital for criminals. I thought you were done with all this. I got out, but you know how it goes. You're never out. Not up here. I thought this place was a myth. We've been here for 22 years. This hospital was built on two things. Trust. Rules. 
Now that's the thing. So it is built on trust and rules. The rules are crazy though. <laughs> the rules are like, you can't kill another patient. Yeah. It's like Fight Club. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. The rules are crazy. Two words only about this film, Jodie Foster. Oh. Jodie Foster hasn't been no in, a, in a movie for four years. She decided that she wanted to do this movie. And I kind of loved her because it's a You know how she tracked this movie down? Yeah, I did yeah. hear that. I did hear that. And I, I appreciate the fact that she's letting herself be seen in a way we haven't seen her before. She's looking all downtrodden and... Um, what's the word, matronly and just sad. And her character of all the characters in the film has a really nice arc. Like we know her backstory, we know her current story. We don't necessarily know where she's going as the end of the film comes along. But I like the fact that her character had a nice arc. The other ones, not so much. Right. And I really love Charlie Day because I think he's hilarious. <laughs> I, you know, uh, Jodie Foster, uh, everything you've said. I completely agree. She she just she's amazing in this movie and she's she's the character that gets the most development and she's really interesting and fascinating to watch. She has a lot of backstory. She interacts with every one of the characters who come into place into mm -hmm. this hotel. Um I think where my disappointment lied with it is that there are so many great actors in this movie and you get this little snippet of each one of them, but there's not a whole lot to each of them. Yeah, like, I just exactly. feel like there's, like, this little <laughs> snippet. They're in the hotel room. Each hotel room contains one of these, mem you know, these these criminals. And they interact with each other. They, there's, like, this secondary storyline going on involving uh, Sophia Botella's character. Mm -hmm. And it just, but it just, it didn't do it for me. There was something missing from it. Now, it's interesting because I saw this movie twice. Yeah. The first time I saw it, I was like, mm, that was three hours of my time. I cannot get back. Yeah. And then I saw it the second time and I enjoyed it more. I don't know why I enjoyed it more the second time. I think because I was able to focus on what was happening a little bit better because the first time it was a lot going on and I don't think. I think my my focus was all over the place and I couldn't really zero in on one thing or pay attention to one thing. So I liked it better when I saw it the second time. I don't know, having said that, I don't know if most people that are going out to see this film are going to see it two times to enjoy it. No. Um, I mean, the movie has not done well at the box office this weekend. Um, you know, another thing for it, which I give it a lot of credit for, is style, the style of this movie, the look, the, the score. It's great. It's really great. Like it looks like something that could have either been shot in the 40s it or shot beautiful. today. It was beautiful it was to look beautiful, at the hotel yeah. design. I love that aspect of it. And I love Foster, but I, I mean, when you have Sterling K. Brown, you have Jeff Goldblum, you have Zachary Quinto, you have Je Jenny Slate. It just, it just didn't do it. There was, Jeff Goldblum was hilarious. I know, but there was not enough of it. Like he's in there two seconds, walks into the room, something happens to him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how many? Tomatoes, would you give Heart Hotel Artemis? I'm going to give this one three. I agree with you. Three. Okay. All right. On next to Hereditary. Okay. So first of all, <laughs> I have said on this show yes. numerous times, I am not the horror flick chick. I do not like horror movies. I like thrillers. I like psychological thrillers. And some of those I can't even hang with. But somebody dragged me to see Hereditary. And I kind of liked it the little bit that I saw through the cracks of my <laughs> eyes because I've truly watched that film like this, like a raccoon. It was hilarious. But um, Kit said you enjoyed it, though. I did, <laughs> but I was scared. I was scared because she sat next to me. Yeah. I was real. I was scared. Like I, her and I jumped a couple of yeah. times, and I was like, ah! it was just, it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it was stupid. But Hereditary <laughs> is this film about this woman whose mother has passed away. She has this secret past and this secret life that she doesn't know about until her mother passes. But what I really love about Hereditary is not the fact that it was a horror flick, not the fact that it was a psychological thriller. Two things I loved. I loved, loved, loved Toni Collette. And I love the fact that they used the the model of the miniature house that she was making was the scenes before they would happen or after they would happen. I thought that was a really interesting way to plot a story along. That was really ingenious to me. I love that. But Toni Collette was killing it. And this is the first time she's done something in this genre since Sixth Sense, right? Yeah, it's been a long time. 
It's been yeah. a long time. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think um, Toni Collette is by far the reason to see this movie. I mean, her performance, there's been a lot of talk that she's going to be nominated for an Oscar oh, and an def- award season. Most definitely. Uh, I mean, it's pretty early to call that. I mean, but I, out of the performances so far for the first half of the year, I think it's one of the strongest. Um, it, it is much more of a psychological thriller. Um, if you're someone who enjoys movies like A Quiet Place, where something's like beat by beat very quickly, like 90 minutes, this one's t- over two hours in length. Mm-hmm. So be prepared that it's going to take some time to build up that story. Yeah, it does. Like the, I would say the last, the last act of the movie is when things really start start kicking off. But there are <laughs> there are some things. Yes, yes, there is. But there are some things that you just cannot unsee or or not know about, and it just there. I, I won't say what it is just for those who want to see the film, not to ruin it for you. But let's play this clip real quick before we continue. Heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. I know my mom would be very touched and probably a little suspicious. My mother was a very secretive and private woman. It's grandma. You know you were her favorite, right? Even when you're a little baby, she wouldn't let me feed you because she needed to feed you. Okay, see, that right there is yeah. very sick. difficult. <laughs> yeah. That just gives you a taste of how crazy I agree. out of the box that movie is. The what? fact that her mother wanted to feed her baby and not her. And I'm like, who does that? And then she has the figurines to show it. I'm like, I can't even no, with that. I, and that sound. Oh, my. Yeah. That the clicking. Sound, the click, click. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would tell you, even there was something so fascinating about this movie when you pointed it out was that model home. I mm. mean, it pretty much opens up on that, and it, it's a character in itself yeah, throughout it the film. And it, it really it, it, it gets in your head, and it's, it's fascinating to watch it. I just rewatched it today because I haven't seen it since Sundance, mm. and the film holds up very nicely, I think. It's not for everyone. It's going to be one that's more for the art house crowd, someone who likes to like have a little bit of patience. And when you get into that last like 30 minutes, it's like, what the F? <laughs> it's totally what the F. Full on. Yeah. Full on. And, and you're like left at the end of this movie. You're like, Whoa, what was What's that? happening? Yeah. What was that? So how many tomatoes would you give this one? Uh, four. I give it five. Five. I give it five. five. Oh it, boy, dude! I slept with my lights, lights on, on for three days. Okay. I mean, and when I say lights on, I'm not talking about a night light. I mean full on lights all over the house on, so I can see every crevice. My mom of deal every, with that. My mother, <laughs> my mother didn't care. She sleeps oh, with lights okay. on or off, but all it was right. hilarious. All right, the next one I know is one of your favorites. It is a documentary about one of our most beloved treasures here in the United States, Mr. Rogers. I know. A documentary um, called Won't You Be My Neighbor. I love this movie. I thought it was really great that we got to see another side of Mr. Rogers. Like, I didn't realize that he was obsessed with his weight and that he kept, he kept the same weight throughout his most of his life. I didn't realize he was a subject of bullying because he was a fat kid. Like, it was nice to know that, you know, I guess sometimes when you see people like that, you just want to know that they're human too. Yeah. I, the reason this movie stuck with me so much, and it, it's kind of interesting because there's been a lot of sad things that have happened this week with suicide and um, the world just in general is in a pretty crappy place right now. And to watch a movie that is all about how people should be treated and how this man was so radical and just spoke to children as though they were full-grown adults and taught them things that would help other people and make them feel good and just cared about being a decent human being that's what i think this is one of the most important films of the year for that very reason it's relevant right now and it's also relevant right now because just like with the nixon administration we have an administration right now that wants to get do away with public television i grew up on public television i grew up on mr rogers and zoom and electric company and sesame street and all these other things that kids love to watch all day long they keep their attention and teach them things that their parents either can't teach them or don't have the time to teach them so i think it's a huge mistake to try to do away with public television and big ups to mr rogers for sitting through congress and talking them into keeping public television when they want to get rid of it again i don't know back then sorry i don't know how they're going to save it this time but mr rogers single-handedly saved it the last time it's a it's a really 
heartwarming documentary. And it didn't get me until like the last 15 or 20 minutes. And then I boohooed like a baby. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's the, the ending of this movie is so incredibly effective because it just ends on a question and you can't help but think about various people in your life. And really, I, I think there's something missing from television today. There's something missing from movies today where you walk out of the film and you feel moved and you feel inspired. And I feel, I felt that way when I walked out of this movie. Absolutely. I felt like I wanted to be kind to someone and like do some good. Very rarely does that ever happen. And no, it this... takes very little, you know, and the interesting thing about that, Scott, is it takes very little effort to be nice and kind. It takes a huge right, amount right. of effort to be nasty and just mean. It just takes so much energy to do to be that like i what movie there was some movie i went to see earlier this week where i was sitting in the screening and i saw an elderly man coming up the the stairs to sit down he looked like he was having a hard time i offered to help him and then he proceeded to go off on me and it was another person of color and then he comes and he sits down and he proceeds to talk talk about me with his back to me saying oh whenever someone sees a black man they think something's wrong i'm like okay i'm right here and i can hear you <laughs> and so at that point i didn't feel sorry for him anymore and then i had to let him have it because i was just like I was trying to be kind, I was trying to be nice, and now I see you don't deserve it. So yeah. there's that. But I digress. Anywho, yes. um, so how many tomatoes? Five you... for me. Five for me too. Yep. All right, so this next film, and our last one for today is Hearts Beat, Hearts Beat Loud. It stars Nick Offerman and Kiersey Clemens. I saw this at Sundance. Me it's too. a really beautiful daddy-daughter story about a daddy and daughter who start a band, but they don't mean to start a band. It just kind of happens that way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch the clip real quick. I'm sorry, Frank. I held off on raising the rent as long as I could. I mean, it's time. My girl starts UCLA in the fall. You can't make your heart feel like what? Just a bunch of words. I want it that way. They want what? What way? I'm sorry, are you bringing up the Backstreet Boys? <laughs> it's actually a pretty good song. <laughs> See, and that's why I love that movie. The dialogue is witty. Nick Offerman, he's so funny. He's so underestimated and so undervalued in this industry, I think. Oh my God, he I is. I love him so much. And Kiersey Clemens is the next, she's gonna be like, oh, she's up with Tessa Tom. Thing. Yeah. yeah, she's gonna be the next big thing. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. This was a really lovely film. I, boo I boohooed at the end of this too. You boohooed at the end of this I one? I did. I saw this movie three times. I did. I saw this movie twice at Sundance. I saw it once at South by Southwest. I didn't want to take Ashley, you know, to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, this is just a wonderful feel-good film where these these two actors are just, Nick Offerman and Kersey, are just phenomenal together. I love the fact that the movie touches upon being, uh, you know, a father trying to bond with his daughter right before she's going away to college and how that feels. You know, we see so many movies about, like, ma ma Mom, mothers and mm -hmm. daughters bonding That's all the exactly time. That's exactly why I like it, And yeah. seeing that, it was fresh. It was different and unique. And, I mean, it, you know, it dealt with the, um, you know, we're in Pride Month right now. It dealt dealt with, like, two lesbians, yep, she's, and, and she's it's a, great. She's LGBTQ. I love, you know, I and love that and about it, it. And it showed the relationship and how it was for her to leave her, her lover behind as well so it was it was a and really the music cool, yeah the, the music, music was the bomb movie. it was really cool Amazing. it was really relevant i really enjoyed it how many tomatoes from you uh four and a half same Ooh, Ooh. We get a, i know ting 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 <laughs> all right so i'm gonna run through some news real quick sure. and um so they're in talks right now with reese reese Witherspoon, that is a hard name to say yeah. fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for Legally Blonde 3 with a 2020 release, um, there's been some speculation and some discussion about um, James Lasseter <laughs> leaving the Disney. Uh, John, 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 John Lasseter, Lasseter sorry. Yeah. Leaving the Disney family. We'll talk about that next week because yep. that ties in with our thing with that. Dolly Parton is scripting an anthology headed for Netflix based on some songs that she's writing. Lee Daniels is directing a Billie Holiday biopic. I'm so excited for this one with Andra Day. And the script is with, um, the, I'm sorry, the script is by Susan Laurie Parks, who is my favorite screenwriter. Oh, yeah? I love her so much. She does a lot of theater. She did the reboot of Porgy and Bess. She's great. Uh -huh. Eddie Murphy is going to star as Dolomite in a new Rudy Ray Moore 
movie for Netflix, which is the only place they could put it because they can't put that on Nash. They can't no. put that on TV. Um, Adam's Family reboot with Charlize Theron, Bette Midler, and Allison Janney. Lego Two has added. Brooklyn Nine Nine, Stephanie Beatrice, and Broad City's Arturo Castro to a cast that already features Allison Brie and Nick Offerman, our boy. Yep. And last but not least, Leslie Odom Jr., Frida Pinto, Cynthia Erivo, and Orlando Bloom are in a new movie produced by Bronze Studios. Ooh. I know it's a lot going on. So next week. That does it for this that one. one. That was a lot. That was Ooh, a lot. But we got it all in. We got it all in. <laughs> um, so next week, we're going to talk about Incredibles 2. Yes. We're going to talk about Tag. Yes. And Superfly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and the American Black Film Festival. <laughs> so until next week, y'all, I am Carla Renata. You can find me across all social media platforms at The Curvy Film Critic. And in no, not at the Curvy Film, at the Curvy Critic. And you can find all of my reviews at the Curvy Film Critic. And where can we find you, Scott? You can find me on WeLiveEntertainment.com. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, go to the other Scott M. Thank you very much for watching. Yes, and thank you guys for watching us. Go to iTunes and give us some support there. And YouTube, comment, we'll comment back. All right, see you next week. Bye. See you next week. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me, at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined! <laughs> The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.